Hi folks, Dale Davidson here at the Davidson Law Offices in uh, South Georgia and uh, North Florida. Here today talking a little bit about disability indemnity compensation, commonly just referred to as DIC. And today we're going to talk about the DIC process as it relates to how do you win a PTSD claim. That's that post-traumatic stress syndrome claim. If we're doing a good job here, if you're being educated, you have any questions, anything like that, like the video please and subscribe. Leave us some comments. Be glad to uh, get back with you. But anyway, let's, let's get to the DIC and the PTSD. So what is the basic requirement? There are basically three. This is the basic three requirements as it relates to any kind of DIC claim. Number one, of course, you've got to have an injury. You've got to have an in-service injury. You've got to have some kind of medical evidence showing that. Now, the injury doesn't necessarily have to have manifest itself during service, but you'd have to have incurred that injury at some time. But number two, uh, there's got to be some kind of link between your injury that you're complaining of. For instance, in this case, we're talking about PTSD claim. So, for instance, uh, you are diagnosed with PTSD. And we're going to talk about the diagnosis here in just a few minutes. So, you're diagnosed with PTSD, but it's only after you've left the service. So, how do you win that claim? Well, you win by having some kind of link showing that you had incurred some really traumatic event. And let me give you some examples of some traumatic events that we've had here in our office. The Battle of Duck Lock in Vietnam it was a three to five day battle. I can't recall exactly how long it was. It was a very lengthy battle in which there were a lot of Americans were killed. And so uh, our client was left in the foxhole with his dead and dying fellow soldiers. Uh, they couldn't evacuate out, so he developed post-traumatic stress syndrome or PTSD. Another one uh, was over in uh, an air base in Thailand, was involved in a firefight. One of his buddies got shot in the stomach. He was there, witnessed that uh, event, and actually cared for his buddy until the medic survived. So uh, those kinds of very traumatic, life-changing, stressful events, that's what we're talking about as far as the link between your diagnosis and your claim. Now, number three, you got to have some kind of credible or supporting evidence. Now, a lot of times, a lot of military records are, are uh, very scarce as to uh, where you were, what you participated in. Maybe you weren't injured yourself, but you were, again, you were on that uh, Utapa uh, Air Force Base in Thailand and you were involved in a firefight. You're not going to find military records like that. So we have to go and find uh, individuals who were actually uh, in the unit that knew uh, or was involved in that incident and get affidavits, stories from them, things of that nature. But let's really talk about uh, the diagnosis itself and then we'll follow up in our other video with the other two uh, criteria. So the diagnosis itself of post-traumatic syndrome is not an easy diagnosis. So the VA looks at this DSM-5 criteria for diagnosing PTSD. So not just every doctor, not every medical doctor can do that. We strongly suggest that you actually find, if you don't already have one, find or we can suggest uh, a medical doctor, psychologist, or psychiatrist that is trained in these PTS diagnoses. And actually that's what they kind of specialize in the uh, PTSD diagnosis. Now certainly the VA has their doctors that can also diagnose that condition, that disorder that uh, you're suffering from is PTSD. And that's all well and good, but that doesn't alleviate the fact that we'll still need to have those that link there between your service connection and your PTSD. So kind of as a recap here, 
you know, there's three requirements to any kind of disability claim. And number one, you've got to have some medical evidence. Okay, that's number one, medical evidence that you suffered uh, this injury. For instance, a diagnosis of PTSD. Number two, you've got to have some kind of link between your service, your active service, and your medical diagnosis because a lot of times these diagnoses are not done while you're in service but afterwards again PTSD is is a prime example and number three we've got to have some kind of supporting credible evidence as to your injury because a lot of times medical records are not all complete as to where you served uh, if you were in some kind of special forces or anything like that, that uh, they're not going to say that you were up in a, a place where you weren't supposed to be during service. If you like what we're doing here, if you're gaining some good information, getting some knowledge here, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions uh, regarding these VA uh, videos or any videos we're doing, please uh, drop us some comments below. So until next time. Y'all be blessed. No more whiskey, I'll have a coke. Catching bass on an old fishing boat. One more story, from Grandpa Joe.